this video, we will start with numerical solutions of equations. And we are going to focus on locate approximately a root of an equation. You will find this on page 547 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. Locate approximately a root of an equation. Recall from ordinary level that the roots of an equation are the x-intercepts. When you are asked to solve an equation, you are being asked to find the roots. Up to now, you have solved linear equations, quadratic equations, and even cubic equations by using direct algebraic methods. Equations that are not reducible to one of the above mentioned cannot be solved by general algebraic techniques. This means that most equations arising from practical applications cannot be solved algebraically. So, if we exchange the traditional idea of finding exact solutions to equations with the idea of rather finding approximate solutions, a whole new world of possibilities opens up. With such an approach, we can, in principle, solve any algebraic equation. This approach is called the numerical method, and it's a way of calculating approximate solutions to equations. Numerical methods are widely used in engineering, computing, finance, and many, many other applications. In this chapter, we will focus mainly on finding the numerical solution of an equation using an iterative formula. We'll come to that. Okay, let's just move it up a little bit. Graphical and or sign change approach. In this chapter, we consider only real value solutions of equations. In general, a given equation has more than one root solution. It is also difficult and sometimes impossible to know beforehand how many roots there will be, or even to get an idea of the values of the roots. A preliminary investigation is thus necessary to obtain as much information about the solutions or roots as possible. For this, graphing is a valuable tool. To sketch the graph of a function y equals fx, try to determine the following points. Intersection with the y-axis and x-axis, where known. Maximum and minimum points, turning points. The change of sign approach focused on decimal search. Okay, decimal search is based on the principle that fx, the y-value, change sign as a curve passes through the x-axis at a root. Above the x-axis, it's positive, and below the x-axis, it's negative. So do you see? So if you work it out, so you substitute the x-value, if it's above, it will be positive, and below, the y-value will be negative. Okay. Using this principle, values of fx are initially found and then successive values are found in increments of 0 0.1 until a change in sign is found. If further accuracy is required, successive values could then be found in increments of 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. So you, you make it just smaller, um, the interval that you are searching for. Okay, until a change of sign is found, therefore giving one root of the equation. But I think it's always better if you first go and look at the practical example and then come back and read this again, and then it will also make more sense. Okay, but what we were trying to say there is we're first going to sketch the graphs separately, and then we're going to use the combine effect. And you must show that it has one root. So by sketching, we're first going to do it by sketching. And then you're going to show by calculating as a root that it's between 1 and 2. But let's start with the sketch. Now, I think because it, some of them are sketches that you're not familiar with, it's going to be good 
to use a table. This one is easy, you're familiar with the sketches, but use a table. So just uh, substitute, get your y values. Substitute, get your y values. Plot your points. Okay, so according to this, you can see they intersect just one time. So there's only one point of intersection. So the equation has one root, and that's what they wanted in A. Now they go to B. Show by calculation that this, the combined effect, has a root, okay, between 1 and 2. So between 1 and 2. You must show that, okay. You don't work it out algebraically. Basically, you use that principle of the negative and the positive. You substitute 1, you get a negative answer. You substitute, so it's the before value, and then the, the whole number after. You substitute 2, you get positive. So there's a change in sign, do you see? So the change of sign indicates the presence of a root between 1 and 2. Okay, and that's first what we're going to do. Now, I think number one is very easy. It's, again, familiar graphs. But just, I think I'm going to, in this video, just do number two. Especially of the root, that it's not so familiar, the graph. But with a table, it's easy to do it with a table. Okay, so let's start with number two. Again, stop the video. Try to do it on your own. And if you are finished, you can continue the video. Number two, A. By sketching the curves y is equal to 1 plus x and y is equal to x squared. Okay, so let's just create our tables. Just going to use this. Okay, let's make this for this one, not so many values. Okay, I think that will be enough. One's maybe a bit... Okay, then I'll create a table for this one. Okay, and then this is going to be, oh, let's just get the pen correct. This is going to be my x, y, and again my x, y. Okay. So if I substitute here, now if I look at this one, try to substitute, you can substitute with decimals, and I think I did it somewhere. But in this case, I think I'm going to start with negative 1. I don't want to get a negative root, okay? So if I have negative 1, that, that's going to, and then I go for 0, and then I want to, it to work out. So let's just then go for the square root of 4, so then I must put 3. Okay, so if I substitute, and remember, I'm just going to do all of it, not all of it. I'm just going to show you the first one. And this, ah, oh, sorry, it's, yeah, uh, plus, don't forget it's plus. So it's 1 minus 1, it's the square root of 0, and that is just 0. And then if it's 0, it's 1. And then if it's 3, it's 2. Okay, this one is also easy. Let's take it more or less the same. I think I'm, I'm going to just make it one more. Okay, I really want, I can put a 2 there. Okay, so negative 2, so remember, I just do the first one again. Negative 2 squared, so it's going to be 4. And then if I'm going to put this one, it's going to be 1, and then 0, 0, and then 1, and then 4. Okay, now I have to go to a grid. Let's just, or uh, what you will do... Just take a ruler, and please do it with a ruler, otherwise it will not be accurate enough. And then just go and make your tail, um, make one centimeter spaces. I just have a grid, but in the exams, you will not maybe have this paper, so just go for one centimeter. Okay, so basically, if I go for one centimeter, um, let's just go, yeah, I can keep to blue first. So it's going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Oh, my pen, my pen, my pen, my pen. Okay, let's just get the pen correct. Um, I just want to see if I can get a... Okay, so this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 1, 2... Three, four, okay. And this is one, negative one, 
negative 2. I don't think we're going to even go there. Negative 3. Okay. This is my x. This is my y. Now let's start plotting it. So it's negative 1 and 0. Okay, there is my first one. And then it's 0 and 1. And then it's 3 and 2. 3 and 2. Okay, and now it's always good that you have the basic form. This is usually how this curves. So if, if you say, for example, there was a 4, so now but then it would have been, um, it would have go just like this going on, just being a decimal. So remember, this was y equals 1 plus x. I'm just going to use another color for the other one. This, I think green will also work. So negative 2 and 4. I'm going to cross this a little bit. Negative 1 and 1. 0 and 0. And then 1 and 1. And then 2 and 4. And then I'm going to just get my curve there. It's a bit sometimes more difficult on my technology. See if I'm not getting it better from this side. Okay. In the same year. Okay. Just that last was not good. Okay, but it doesn't. Okay, now I cannot do it like that. As I say again, I think your technology is going to allow you to do it more accurately. With pen and pencil. <laughs> okay. Okay, but this is y is equal to x squared. Now, can you just take note? How many times does it intersect? Do you see? It intersects there. It intersects there. Okay, so let's, let's see. By sketching on the same set of a show that has two. So you're going to say from the graph, therefore, this is A, um, from the graph, um, you can see, I want to move it up, you can see two points of intersection. Therefore, two roots. Okay, something like that. Show by calculation that the smaller of these two roots, this is the smaller, this is the bigger, lies between negative 1 and 1. Now, remember, all that we're going to do is we're just going to, this is now number B, we're going to take this equation and make it fx. So, remember, fx is the combined effect. Okay. Because that's how I would have solved it. Um, in say a quadratic or a cube, I would have put it equal to each other and solve. So this is the combined effect. Now if I put, now I put this value, negative 1. Just substitute it in. So it's negative 1 squared plus 1 plus negative 1. I go up. And then it's going to be 1 plus, and the 0, and it's just going to be 1. Okay. So take note, positive. And now I'm going to do, I'm just going to rather do it here on the side. I'm just changing colors that you see better, but it's the same. I could have actually already start substituting. Okay, not necessary to rewrite that. Just substitute here. So if, and now I'm substituting zero. Okay. Now that. So focus always with your original one. So it's 0 squared minus 1. I, what is going on with my pen? From 1 plus 0. And that is just going to give me an answer of what is the square root of 1? It's just 1. So it's negative 1. So it's negative. And then I'm going to end up again. And therefore, the change of sign, the change of sign 
you see from positive to negative indicates the let's move it up the reasons of a root between x is negative 1 and x is 0. Okay, and that's number B. Now I'm just going, going to do number C here. I think I just want to take this lines away. Okay, let's just see if I can. I'll just go back to basic. There are not so many lines. Okay, so let's do number C. Show the calculation that the larger of these two do. So you start again. I'm going to just rewrite it for this one. You start again with that combined effect. And now it's just 1. So if I substitute 1, okay, and I just do that. And it's 1 minus, and now I will use my calculator. So press on your calculator and it correct to two sec and I, I just two decimal places. I think it's good. I think one decimal place will also work. So one minus square root two equals and I get negative zero point four one. And if I then I just use another color and then if I put in two always if I start working here, it's just for my technology. And I like is aligned there. Okay. So then it will be 2 squared minus uh, 1. Okay, let's just get that correct. 1 plus 2, and that's 4 minus the square root of 3. And let's just press that. So 4 minus square root 3 equals, and again, two decimal places, 2 point, you can, one decimal place will also work. 2.27. <clears throat> no, just take note, sorry. This was negative and this was positive. And now you can say again, therefore, the change of sign, you can even say from negative to positive indicates indicates the presence of a root between x is equal to 1 and here it is x equal to two, there it is. And that's how you do it.